Hello, I'm Regina McCann Hess, president of Forge Wealth Management, and welcome to our Women in Wealth series. Today, I have a new friend with me. And Lisa, can you tell us who you are, what you do, and what you love about what you do? Okay. So, um, wow, that's so there's a lot of questions. It's loaded questions, right? right? Questions. So, I live in Virginia Beach. And I'm a professional hypnotherapist, coach, and trainer. I'm a wine lover and a dog mom. Nice. And what I do professionally is I help with, or I work with individuals and organizations to help them to initiate better, hmm, better communication, uh, understand themselves better, help, help to learn how to achieve their goals more quickly, easily, and permanently, and be able to manage change, uncertainty, and conflict much more easily and effectively. And I do that through the utilization of neurocognitive techniques that help to change the way that we think and change the, the way that we handle our emotions so that we feel more in control of the emotions and thoughts that lead to the actions and then the outcomes that we're getting. Wow. That's fascinating. So cool. Um, so like what type of, like, do you attract a certain type of client or, or like, um, I guess, um, certain type of need specifically, or do you get a general uh, approach? Right. So I've got two branches of my company, which is the coaching center for mind training and success. One branch, which is the one that I started with and have been working with for 25 years, which is wellness coaching and, and personal change. So a majority of the clients that I've worked with over the years come to me to help their, to change their lifestyle habits so that they can lose weight, improve their health, get off medications. Also, uh, dealing with things like um, negative habits that they want to quit, so smoking or chewing tobacco or now vaping. Mm. Good point. Uh, annoyances like, you know, occasionally I'll work with somebody for biting their lip or biting their nails or pulling their hair. I also worked with people for helping them to minimize or eliminate fears or phobias, such as uh, driving or crossing bridges or going through tunnels, claustrophobia, fear of water or deep water. I've also worked with athletes to help them either improve their performance. And there's a lot of you know, there's sports psychology, which, which helps athletes to do that, to, to get over the, like the performance anxiety. And also I've worked with athletes after they've had some kind of injury and they've found that there's, they're not able to, even though they're healed, they're not able to get up to the same performance level that they were once at before the injury, because the brain is still a little bit hesitant, remembering the, whatever the situation was that caused the injury. And so helping them to release that fear and hesitation and be able to get back not only to the level they were before they had the injury, but also excel beyond that. So, so that's, that's like their, very yeah. liberating. Like yes. I'm, I'm feeling like I'm feeling liberated by some of the things that you're saying, <laughs> like you're helping people free themselves of all these things that are, they're dragging behind them. Right. Exactly. Dragging them, dragging them down, dragging them around, uh, you know, feeling just disempowered or, 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 you know, a lot of times people say, I know what to do, but I'm having a hard time doing it or doing it consistently enough to finally get the result that I'm looking for. So uh, unlike, you know, sometimes people refer to me as a life coach, but I try to you know correct them around that. What I do really well is I help people when they know they have a specific behavior change they want to make or a goal they want to achieve. Or, or they know that their inner thinking is blocking them from taking actions that they, they need to, 
to excel how they want to. I'm really good at helping to release those blocks. Right? It's sort of like removing removing the brakes. So, uh, and and those blocks can can come from a variety of different situations, but a lot of them stem from the first seven years of our life based on the beliefs that we've developed that others give, have given us and we've accepted or that we interpreted based on the experiences that we had. So the majority of our beliefs are formed by the age of seven. And so, you know, most of us have a seven-year-old that's really <laughs> dictating what we're doing. And so we need to free up that that's limited seven-year-old uh, um, thinking and bring it more to the current thinking and, and environment and and capabilities so that we are not operating off of a limited system and perspective. Well, that changes everything, knowing that it's a seven-year-old in there. <laughs> and that's what I'm We're dealing younger. with, right? We're younger, right? Yeah. yeah. Wow. And, and it, and at that age, you know, you can't control your own environment. You're, you're basically a victim of your environment and you have no say in anything. So you're just absorbing everything and and it's going into deep crevices and it comes out all these years later. And that's why people need you. Yes. Yeah. So it's, you know, we're just, uh, sometimes I refer to myself as a computer programmer for the human mind. Cool. So I am trained in helping to identify the bad code or the outdated code or the, uh, the old operating system and either upgrade the operating system or help to identify the bad or unproductive code. I don't like to use the word bad yeah. uh, because it has a reason, you know, it's, it was formed for a reason to mostly for, for protection is to update it or and change it out for better code that's more in alignment with what you're capable of now or what your goals are now. That's really, really cool. And so fascinating. I never thought of it that way. So now you're, now you're going to, I'm going to be thinking about this conversation many, many days and weeks from now and keep going back to that (laughs) seven-year-old. It explains a lot. (laughs) Explains a lot, right? And so sometimes, especially when you see other people, you're like, God, they're acting like such a child. And it's, Mm. You know, we just revert and Mm -hmm. uh, go back to those safety mechanisms that, that we learned and, and have, have been running off of for so long. So they're just ingrained and they're automatic. Mm -hmm. Uh, Sometimes we even have another part of ourselves that's saying, why am I doing this? Right. I shouldn't be doing this, but we can't seem to stop ourselves because the subconscious programming is much more powerful than the conscious programming. And so that's why I try to explain to people when they get down on themselves or saying, I just need more willpower. or I, you know, I don't have enough willpower. I'm weak. Is I explain to them, it's not about that. It's that your unconscious programs are much stronger. They've been there a longer time and they uh, have been reinforced for so long. They're well ingrained. And ultimately they were formed for protection. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, sure. you know, if, if, if we're trying to protect ourselves, then that's going to be the default uh, until we learn new ways to have that, that sense of, of safety and security and capability. Although ultimately there really is like safety is a, is an illusion, <laughs> you know, safety is not guaranteed. It's more about helping people to trust that they have the capabilities to be able to handle whatever situations come up and take care of themselves. Wow. That's said very well, stated very well. So if, if someone listening to this today wanted to learn more about your services and what you offer, how would they find you? So my website is, is one of the ways that people tend to find me to help them with, with these behavior changes or goals. And the website is themindtrainingcenter.com. That's my sort of my portal website when you go to that one, because I have different elements of my business. Like I said, the personal and wellness coaching. I also do some business and sales coaching and training, and then the corporate and team and organization coaching and training. So when they come to that portal website, 
depending on where they click, which of those three areas they're interested in, it will bring them to like my wellness site, for example, uh, which talks more about utilizing the hypnotherapy, that kind of thing. I tend to not really use that much when I'm working with the corporate, although sometimes I do incorporate it in with, with individuals, but we, I, I tend to term it guided visualization. It's uh, wow. a little bit more acceptable than, oh, hypnosis. Yeah. Well, although I think hypnosis is kind of cool too. It's, it's so different. You know, you don't, you don't, you don't meet too many people who can perform hypnosis. So I'm like, yeah, you know, I'm usually the, the only one in the room when I yeah. go to a party or a networking meeting, <laughs> that's cool. That's the hypnotherapist. But that, that was the first modality that I learned. And that was in high school, just reading a book about hypnosis, self-hypnosis. Wow and curious with that and practice with that and found it to be really interesting. And then I eventually got trained and certified as a hypnotherapist so that I could help other people in the ways that it's helped me over the years, which is losing weight and keeping it off. I haven't had an issue with my weight for over 20 years, quitting smoking, uh, getting rid of my fear and phobia of public speaking so that now I enjoy it. Uh, stress management, procrastination, pain management, so many different things that I've used it for over the years. So that's why I always tell people is, is, you know, I walk my talk, all these tools that I, that I use with clients are ones that I first used for myself, found value and benefit from, and then got trained and certified so that I could share them with others. And a lot of what I do is teach people how to use these tools for themselves. So I use the tools with them but then I'm teaching them along the way about how to take over for me because that's, you know, you don't want to be reliant on somebody else in order for you to be, do, have, or feel how you want. Right. And, and, you know, all these tools are fairly simple to learn and to utilize. And so it's, it's about giving the power back to the client and feeling like they have the skills and these techniques to be able to use in all different kinds of situations to help them to uh, make the behavior shifts or help them to change the way that they're thinking or learn how to how to begin to control the their negative emotions and begin to shift them uh, so that their actions are more effective okay. because our thoughts and our emotions influence what actions we take mm -hmm. and if we've got negative thoughts, if we've got negative or disruptive emotions, it's naturally going to produce negative actions and then not so great results. So the first part of what I'm doing with people, and this is the tier formula that I work off of, is you have to learn how to, under, to be aware of your thinking process and to begin to shift thinking when it's not productive. And you also need to have the right emotional state even with the right, you know, thought processes, because you can have a thought, but if you don't have a strong emotion, either pain or pleasure with the thought, it generally doesn't lead to an action. Right. So we need wow. both the, con the control over the thought process and our emotions in the moment. And then that's going to better influence effective actions to create more of the results that we're really looking for. Wow. That's Instead of the old default ones. Yeah. Yeah. So impressive. That's so cool. Obviously a great service that you're providing. Um, so, and you've, you've had a pretty nice career. Uh, and this is a question that I tend to ask all of my ladies and that's uh, what are some of the challenges that you have faced as a professional woman? Well, you know, I've been out of corporate for so long. My degree is in marketing. So I was in the marketing field when I lived in Boston for many years. And so now, uh, you know, working, working for myself and working from home, I don't, I don't have, I think a lot of the challenges or barriers that women in the workplace do, but I would say one of the challenges I do still experience is if I'm talking with a man and we're discussing them becoming a private client, or I'm talking to them about, you know, helping with, you know, maybe their, their company or a company that they work for. 
that sometimes it starts to turn into an attraction thing where they're hitting on me oh. or I'm getting the sign that they're, you know, wanting to, you know, have it not just be professional. And it's so awkward right? yeah. and, it, and it feels so unfair because if I was a man, you know, unless the person was gay, perhaps that, you know, that wouldn't be happening. Mm-hmm. And, and so, and then it's, then it like, it just, you know, after that, it's like, I wouldn't feel comfortable working with the person. Right. Because, you know, I'd always have to be kind of feeling like I have this guard up Yeah. and, and how nice am I being and, and, and that kind of thing. So, yeah, so it, that can be a, a challenge. And I know that women in the workplace, they, they definitely encounter that more on a regular basis than, than I do yeah. working from home. So. Yeah. Yeah. That's unfortunate. That's unfortunate. Um, okay. So uh, another thing I'm wondering about long thinking long, longer term, what is your retirement vision? How do you envision your life, you know, as you retire or partially retire? What's that, what does that look like for you? Yes. You know, it's interesting because I, Earlier this year, as I was working with one of my coaches, she had us write out a three-year and then a 10-year vision. And I really, I mean, at this point, I can't imagine retiring in the sense of not doing this work because I love it so much and it fulfills me and, and it really makes an impact. And I'm, I've always been somebody who's been service-minded and wanting to help people. Right. So that's what gives me the juice. That's what gives back to me. So I can't imagine not being in a position to continue to do this type of work, at least to some degree. But I would also like to feel like I'm able to is sort of be more selective, picking and choosing what, you know, who I want to work with and, and the organizations I want to work with and the kind of training that I want to do. And, and then have that, you know, have that free time, have that, uh, you know, week where I'm not working at all, work three weeks on and one week off or, or, you know, the four day work week, uh, which actually I have right now. I, I don't see clients good. on Fridays. Yeah, so good, I, for I you. good for you. And being able to have my business run without me there. Uh, being, you know, being the person that's always, because right now I'm still a solopreneur. So being able to have my business run, income coming in, even when I'm taking a vacation or I'm traveling. So I'd like to be able to see myself doing those trips, traveling places that I want to go, spending time with family and friends, doing some of those fun things, but still getting fulfilled, you know, going back to that well and being able to have those projects that, that really light me up. Yeah, exactly. And, and are making the impact that I want to. Yeah, that's exciting. And the other thing, I will let you in on a little secret because I have a lot of retirees that I work with. My retirees are actually busier than my worker bees <laughs> um, because they get to say yes to things that they put yeah. off for all these years. They get to do the, you know, the volunteering that they wanted to do or, uh, you know, try some other type of, you know, art or craft or even yeah. another career, anything. And it's just like, they're so busy. <laughs> they're hard to get a hold of. So it, it's kind of neat to see that though, but it's, but it's a different busy. It's a busy that they right. want to be doing. They want to have right. some fun. They're enjoying themselves. So it's, it's kind of cool. It's yeah. There's, cool. there's less of that stress and pressure of, you know, performance and, you know, making sure you still got, you know, you're doing what you need to, to get the paycheck coming in. Yeah. Et cetera. It's, it's more mm-hmm. like the, the selective, yeah. um, you know, activities. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Well, thank you so much for joining me today. This was absolutely a joy. Uh, Thanks for I really, inviting me to have oh, a chat with you. Yeah, it's, you're welcome. I really enjoy your story. I'm fascinated by what you do. I think it's so cool. Um, but thank you again for joining us. And thank you everyone else for listening to our Women in Wealth series. And we appreciate you. And again, I'm Regina McCann Hess, president of Forge Wealth Management. 
Uh, you can find me at uh, forgewealth.com and I'm on social media, Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube at Forge Wealth. And on LinkedIn, I'm Regina McCann Hess. Have a great day.